Howdy, y'all. Welcome back. Thank you for being here, and thank you for 59,000 subscribers. Today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. The sheer amount of newly discovered photographs that I'm uncovering on a daily basis about our not-so-distant past is only being matched by the massive achievements that are being done by you. All of the information you provide, the community you provide, and the new perspectives that you provide. So I thank you so much for that. Previously, I have made a video on Archangel Russia and the concept in the Russian myths and legends of Archangel or somewhere near that location being the site where the Archangel Michael defeated and imprisoned the devil, a land that became known as Tartarus, but later labeled as Tartary, just one of the seven major angels written about in the ancient texts. Seven continents, seven colors in a rainbow, seven days in a week, seven wonders of the ancient world, the seven sister stars watching over earth, seven hills of Rome, the seven Roman kings, the seven seas, the seven sages, the seven classical planets, the seven metals of antiquity. In medieval times, you have the scholarly pursuit consisting of seven subjects, grammar, rhetoric, logic, music, arithmetic, geometry, and astronomy, commonly referred to as the liberal arts. There are seven distinct notes on a musical scale. Shakespeare wrote of the seven ages of man, a concept that goes back much earlier and plays an important role in esoteric theosophical circles. The phases of the moon last approximately seven days. The Jewish menorah contains seven candles. In ancient Egyptian religion, there was held the belief of seven paths to heaven and seven heavenly cows. Osiris led his father through the seven halls of the underworld. There are seven deadly sins in Christian tradition. However, the esoteric nature of the number seven seems to trace back even further to the ancient temples of the world, step pyramids, with seven distinct layers. Some historians will trace these pyramids and other ancient monuments of similar structure with seven distinct layers to the cult of Mithra, which believed that the soul ascended through seven spheres before entering paradise. In Christian belief, seemingly on the contrary, there is the concept of the seven layers of purgatory. If you break a mirror, how many years of bad luck do you receive? The number seven has always played a key role in regional folk sayings around the world, being a number often associated with the mysterious. In ancient India, for example, the god of fire has seven wives, mothers, and sisters, and can produce seven unique flames. The Indian sun god has seven heavenly horses that pull his chariot. In the Rig Veda, for example, there are seven seasons which affect the seven parts of the world, themselves marked by the seven unique fortresses. In Hippocratic medicine, the number seven indicates the rules of the body, with illnesses lasting seven days, 14 days, 21 days, etc., occurring in seven-day intervals. In the New Testament, we can see the number seven being the unity of the four corners of the earth with the Holy Trinity, four plus three. The number seven is also featured in the book of Revelation, seven churches, seven angels, seven seals, seven trumpets, and the seven stars. The Quran speaks of seven heavens and Muslim pilgrims walk around the Kaaba in Mecca, Islam's most sacred site, seven times. In Hinduism, there are seven higher worlds and seven underworlds. And in Buddhism, the newborn Buddha rises and takes seven steps. In Irish folklore, the seventh son of the seventh son was said to be imbued with almost godlike powers and would bring about massive change on the earth, both good and bad. We're also told the number seven is oddly just about as far as our attention span can reach. In test runs at Harvard University, we're told the prime number of seven is the average number of unique items or pieces of information that one person can retain in their short-term memory. It was due in part to this 1950s test done at Harvard that the seven-digit standard phone number was agreed upon. Seven 
is also said to be in multiple tests, including those conducted by Alex Bellos, the most popular number in one test where over 40,000 people were asked to pick their favorite number of any number, over 4,000 of them picked the number seven. More esoteric belief says that each person has six more lookalikes on earth. That comes to a total of seven. The lookalikes can apparently be found anywhere in the world. Doppelgangers. Which brings me to the meat and potatoes of today's video. That is the Seven Sisters of Moscow, also known as the Stalin Skyscrapers or the Stalin High Rises. This collection of eerily similar superstructures were built between the late 1940s and the early 1950s, with all seven being completed in roughly seven years or less. These buildings are all found in Moscow and they're absolutely fascinating to me. Not only because the shadow that's cast over the regime which put these towers into place and the narrative which leaves a lot for us to question, but honestly, these are fascinating because the architecture itself. These all appear to be built in what we would call the old world style. Some may call these buildings brutalist or Stalinist, but honestly, they remind me nearly exactly of the hundreds, if not thousands of old world style buildings that we've seen torn down throughout all of the videos that I've made in different cities around the world. Most of the time, buildings of this stature would appear in the 1800s, almost miraculously in major cities, only to be demolished right around the time of modern photography. Moscow, with the Seven Sisters, on the other hand, has this intricate look to it with these standing feats of engineering which honestly once we get into the details of each one that will make you begin to question why we don't construct more buildings like this in the western world we often hear naysayers claim in old world videos of mine that we simply don't have the time or resources to construct like that anymore we don't have the space sometimes claiming we don't have the skill but when we look at these magnificent Seven Sisters in Moscow, built roughly 70 years ago, we can see that this beauty, this architecture, is still possible. Diving into this narrative briefly, let's begin with the largest of the Seven Sisters, and we're going to go through all of them here. This is the main building of Moscow State University. This is the tallest educational building in the entire world standing over 787 feet or 240 meters. What makes this even more interesting is as with all of the Seven Sisters, while appearing old world in nature, this building was actually constructed using engineered steel frames filled in with concrete and masonry with concrete slab foundations roughly seven meters thick, making these Seven Sisters far more heavy than nearly any other skyscraper that's found in America or anywhere else in the world. The main tower alone used over 130,000 cubic meters of concrete. The main building of Moscow State University was the tallest building in all of Europe upon its completion, a title that it held until 1990. As with all the seven sisters of Moscow, the thing that ties them all together and indeed leaves us with a little room for imagination is the massive spire, this type of antiquitech on top of the structure. While it's said to serve no official purpose other than to be decorative and to tie them all together, adding height to the structure, we find basically the exact same type of pillar or spire with this unique metal work atop every single one of these sisters as well as many of the demolished old world buildings that we find throughout the world. Is this merely for aesthetic value or could it have served a larger purpose? The second of the Seven Sisters is the Hotel Ukraina in Moscow. It is the second tallest of the Seven Sisters, standing at a whopping 198 meters tall, 
and it consists of 34 floors. From its conception, it was always planned to be the tallest hotel in the world, an honor that it held until 1975. The second sister is sitting on rather precarious land and therefore utilizes an ingenious system of needle pumps dug deep below the infrastructure to keep the land dry and the massive hotel in place. The Hotel Ukraina contains over 500 rooms with 38 full-size apartment homes within. As we look at the third of the Seven Sisters, a trend should begin to arise here. All of these buildings look nearly identical, as if manufactured from the same exact parts, built by the same architects, as if truly smaller pieces to one larger, seven-pieced superstructure. That being said, the third sister is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs building, Moscow. It stands over 172 meters tall, housing 27 stories. Originally, this structure was meant to resemble a much older style step pyramid. However, under direct orders from Stalin, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs building was changed and the additional Antiquitec spire was added on top. Out of all of the sisters, this one appears to have the most disagreements upon its construction, with one of the architects, Minkus, claiming in his 1982 autobiography that the outer walls are mainly a facade. The stonework is not up to par. And furthermore, the building was originally supposed to have less floors above ground and more floors underground. It's quite an interesting tidbit when we see the sheer nature of what the third sister looks like today. The fourth sister is another beautiful tower-like hotel. This spire, which for size comparison, seems to be about one-sixth the size of the actual hotel below it, really stands out on this building like a sore thumb. This fourth sister that we're looking at is known today as the Hilton Moscow, but was originally known as the Leningradskaya Hotel. One of the more esoteric of the seven sisters Leningradskaya is apparently full of empty space, or rather, massive raised ceilings and open floor plans, which leave modern investors baffled. We're told this hotel stands 136 meters tall, with 26 total floors. However, only 19 of these floors can actually hold guests. One historian claimed Leningradskaya was big enough to contain 1,000 rooms, and yet it only contains 354, further saying that only 22% of the total space is livable, with the rest being decorative or open air. Now, the fifth sister, and excuse my pronunciation here, but we're just going to call this the Embankment Building. The Embankment Building is deeply entrenched, not only in Russian history, but also quite literally entrenched in the landscape around it. This fifth sister stands a menacing 176 meters tall, or 577 feet. As it was completed before some of the other sisters on this list, for a moment in time, the fifth sister, or the embankment building, was the tallest building in all of Europe. The main tower has 32 functional floors, and some of these are mechanical. The structure was originally intended to be luxury housing for Russia's elite and rich. But after the end of World War II, during construction, plans began to change, and the hotel on the embankment became a series of low-rent apartments for the growing middle class. That's right, the tallest building in Europe was low-rent apartments. It's fascinating. As you can see with the other seven sisters, we again see that this massive building is topped by an even more massive Antiquitec spire. Now, 
call me biased, but I absolutely love the design of this The Sixth Sister. Known as Kudrinskaya Square Building, the location and setting the surrounding make it appear like we're looking at something out of Central Park or something in New York City. It's absolutely picturesque. We're told this Moscow Tower building, Kudrinskaya, stands over 160 meters or 520 feet tall with 22 usable floors in the center tower and 18 usable floors on each of the wing towers. This building was the last of the Seven Sisters to be completed and was officially intended to house cultural leaders of Russia, but of note here, it was not meant to house politicians. The Seventh Sister is the more modest, I'd say, but equally impressive Red Gate building in Moscow. Designed by Alexei Dushkin of Moscow Metro fame, this building only stands 11 stories, but it's marked by its massive pillar, appearing to nearly double the height of the building. As with the other Seven Sisters, the tower, the spire, the pillar, were designed accordingly to match the ones found on all the other sisters. Oddly, of all the sisters, we're told this building was the first of these massive buildings to admit to having underground connections that tied all of the seven sisters to the better part of Moscow. Those are the Seven Sisters of Moscow. Massive achievements in engineering and architecture, but also reminders of the world we lost, the old world. Marking the penultimate decisions in Stalin's political career. Today, this sort of architecture is aptly named Stalinist, but as we can see, there are many traces of much earlier, much more esoteric influence in these creations. To take that one step further, or rather, to neatly tie a bow around this episode before sending you on your way to do more research is the idea or the concept where the seven sisters really arose from again this is current narrative but we're told the original idea was to construct the seven sisters all around one even larger more scary more intense sister this was to be the palace of the soviets but let me back things up before trying to bring this full circle for you the current narrative will tell us when Napoleon Bonaparte fled Moscow, Tsar Alexander I, on the auspicious night of December 25th, 1812, signed a manifesto declaring his desire to build the largest cathedral possible in honor of Christ the Savior, who protected Moscow. The Tsar's plan was to build atop Sparrow Hills, the highest point in Moscow. We're then told as this cathedral neared its completion, or possibly was completed, we have Tsar Nicholas succeeding his brother Alexander. We're told Nicholas strongly opposed Freemasonry and secret societies and halted all construction on the cathedral. Nicholas then hired world-famous architect Konstantin Thon to build the cathedral closer to the Kremlin in Moscow. The site was already occupied by a smaller stone church, which was torn down and relocated. The cathedral then took many decades to build, with scaffolding still being up 25 years after construction began. The cathedral had one of the largest domes in Russia upon completion, further accentuated by the lavish gold electroplating, Antiquitec at its finest. Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture, 1812 being the year Tsar Alexander ordered the cathedral, was written to premiere at the Cathedral of Christ our Savior, and it did. But following that, something even more interesting occurred. Gold seemed to become more important than the cathedral itself. In a multitude of letters written between Moscow state officials in the early 1900s, 
we see that most of them agree the dome of the church is nearly solid gold rather than being gold plated with letters claiming over 20 tons of gold are built directly into the cathedral of christ our savior lo and behold following the 1917 russian revolution and the ussr officially sponsoring state atheism the fate of the church was written by 1924 hearing about how much gold apparently resided in the walls Stalin orders the location of the Cathedral of Christ our Savior to be where he will now construct his massive, truly unmatched palace of the Soviets. For months, wise Russians attempted to plea to save the cathedral, but on December 5, 1931, once the cathedral was gutted and the dome torn down, Stalin ordered the cathedral, the third tallest Orthodox cathedral in the world, to be demolished. He then decides to use this area as the foundations. Some would say he founded the foundations below the old cathedral, but either way, this was to be the location for his massive Palace of the Soviets. Without waxing poetic for too long as I have already in this video, the Palace of the Soviets was to serve as the administrative and political center for the USSR. The Grand Hall alone was to measure 430 feet square, with a ceiling over 330 feet tall, allowing for the seating of over 20,000 people. If completed, the palace would have been the tallest and the largest structure in the entire world, with the internal volume of the palace of the Soviets being able to contain the volume of the next six largest skyscrapers combined. The proposed weight would have exceeded 1.5 million metric tons, which would have included exactly 187 elevators. The structure was to be topped by a 100 meter or 333 foot tall statue of Stalin. For reference, the head of this statue alone would have exceeded the size of the Pillar Hall House of the Union in nearby Moscow. According to this narrative, the top layer of limestone in the area that they built upon for the foundations was too thin, so the entire building had to be built on the second layer directly below, which was roughly 66 feet below the surface, meaning not only did they have to excavate or demolish entire parts of Moscow, including one of the largest Orthodox cathedrals in the world, but they also had to flatten the landscape and even it out to 66 feet below ground level. Incomprehensible. But, as the narrative goes, it occurred. We're told construction began, the land and the surrounding buildings were removed, the ancient Orthodox Church was demolished, the gold was taken. However, and this is the sad part, we have almost zero photographs of any of this supposed construction. We're told the structure or at least the frame, had reached nearly 90 meters tall, or almost 300 feet by the time it was eventually demolished, and yet we don't really have any photographs that show us the palace of the Soviets. All we really have are the umpteen artistic depictions. As the palace of the Soviets was supposedly being built, this led the way for the other massive Seven Sisters to begin. So how do we have photographs of the Seven Sisters, of their construction, of what was occurring in Moscow before and after they were created, and yet of the largest of these buildings, at least in the plan, we don't have any evidence. It's absolutely fascinating. The Seven Sisters were meant quite literally as sister buildings to Big Brother himself, the 333-foot statue of Stalin atop the Palace of the Soviets. The Seven Sisters were all completed and united by their spires and their technology, and we have photographs mostly the whole time along the way. The Palace of the Soviets, however, was never completed. I'm going to wrap up the video there. If you want to look into this history a little bit more, if you look into the Orthodox Church that was torn down, that really spearheaded this whole project, this Orthodox Church was actually rebuilt in the early 2000s, and it looks a lot like it did 
over 100 years ago, even with the gold-like domes on top. So that's another fascinating piece to this history. There's a lot of aspects to this seven sister project that occurred in Moscow, and it goes much deeper than I dove into into this video, but I wanted to scratch the surface. I wanted to show you what these amazing towers look like, and I wanted to say thank you so much for being here and see if you have any more ideas or theories or relevant information that we can use to decipher this code even further. If you'd like to support me or support the channel, the only way to do so would be at this link right here. This is my one official PayPal for the channel and it's the best way to reach out to me directly i thank you so much for anyone that would like to do that and i thank you for everyone who enjoys this content please save any of these photographs share this information share this video subscribe to the channel and let's break it down in the comment section down below i look forward to talking to you there and i look forward to seeing you on the next video cheers y'all